understanding how ice sheets might melt is a tall order. Every year, the ice grows and retreats with the seasons. It also flows, moving slowly downhill toward the sea. Far from being a solid mass, an ice sheet is a complex system that is constantly in motion. And one of the uncertainties arises from our inability to completely understand what these outlet glaciers are responding to. Are they responding to global warming, or are there other internal, intrinsic uh, features of the ice sheet that they're responding to? Now Bea Chato and her team are using a dramatic new approach that should help scientists answer those questions. Using technology that would be at home in a Hollywood studio, they've created dramatic 3D images of Greenland's ice sheet melting over time. You just really begin to see things differently. You can say, well, I can imagine it in 3D. I, it's still very different, especially when you can peek on the surfaces, you can turn them, you can go there, you can crawl them, you can fly there. So you see things what you didn't expect to see there. The 3D images are created using a combination of archival aerial photos and satellite images. The trick is to find pairs of images that overlap slightly, then feed them to the viewer's eyes separately, with the help of some special 3D glasses. The resulting scene can be explored on a computer or projected onto a screen. The left eye gets a slightly different view from the right eye, and the brain fuses these two images to a 3D interpretation. And it's exactly the same thing on this system here. For this to work properly, the images have to be carefully lined up to one another and to GPS coordinates. We use common points. You find the same rock, for example, in two photographs. And then you match it up, and then you just use mathematical techniques. The technique has been successful in combining all kinds of images, from satellite photos to ice-penetrating radar. Even aerial photos from the 1940s and 50s have been fed into the system, and that means the team can also look back in time. This system won't replace field studies, of course, but using a specially designed 3D mouse, measurements can be made to help scientists identify which areas of ice are changing the fastest and where they need to focus their efforts on the ground. We know that there's dramatic change there today, therefore these might be good places to understand how they behaved in the past. First we can say, well, it didn't happen in the last 20 years, it didn't happen in the last 100 years, but what ultimately we and others try to say how it compares with this long timeline of 10,000 or 100,000 years. And the better we understand the past, the better we'll be able to answer questions about the future.